shit up and I want to see this side explode. You know what I'm saying? And then watch your volume go up in your office because you just don't give a shit who's looking at you, what you look like, nothing. You just let that thing rip. Our next speaker here is one of the most passionate, quiet, fired up men that I know. And he's going to bring you a hell of a message now. Let's get our hands together for this guy and let's send him huge love. Dr. Chris Walker. to see everybody. So, uh, D always seems to come at the right time, at least especially for me. And this year was like perfect timing. Um, many of you here last year, uh, last D got to hear our story. And uh, Monday would have been the Twin's sixth birthday. So talk about timing. This could have come at a better time for all of us. Someone asked me um, last week when I had patients were asking, you know, why are you closed right at the holidays and three-day week? And they're like, where are you going? And I was like, well, I'm, I'm going to DE. And they said, what's that? I said, the best way I can explain how DE is for me is D is my Cairo church. It's where I go to get dipped in love and my chiropractic soul goes to be born. And that's what it is. This has been my 23, 23rd year of coming to DE. Had a little breaks there here and there. Um, I can tell you, life is much better when I have you all in it. And it's a lot easier to go through. So, we lost um, a great chiropractic warrior right before Christmas. Dr. John Batwell uh, practices, uh, whew, I don't know, two and a half, three miles from me. Um, his sons now run the practice. Uh, so we had his memorial um, this past Saturday, and Gary Wasserman did, his, did one of his eulogies and then followed me with his uh, granddaughter. And it was like we were at a DE meeting, because the entire conversation of eulogy with Gary, we're talking about moments that happened in this room. Whether this room is here in Clearwater or in Sarasota or in Atlanta. <clears throat> and just how much passion and experience happened with John. I don't know if you guys know that John was one of the 250 that helped start Life University. He was one of the worst guys seeing 100 people a day for years upon years upon years. He was a great Christian man and an absolutely awesome chiropractic warrior. 
I can tell you that in my city of Augusta, the word Batwell means chiropractic. And I wouldn't be where I am success-wise if he didn't lay, lay that foundation. We, uh, we got something cool made uh, for John. So I went down, I was driving down to go have lunch, and I had this vision in my car. And I sometimes have lots of crazy visions, you can just ask my wife. And I was like, there's no way they can do it. No, they can do it. Well, all they can say is no. So uh, we go down to our local florist that we do all our stuff with. And I was like, can you do this? And he goes, I think. And I was like, okay, but I need to know. It's either got to, it's either got to rock or I don't want you to do it at all. And, I mean, they didn't even got the shadows of the picture that I gave. I mean, it was phenomenal. Um, you know, John, he was an AO guy, an upper cervical guy. And uh, in the AO world, he was, he was, he was tops. So um, I want to share a story, my personal story with John. So it was probably about this time, well, probably a couple of months after this, 13 years ago, when we opened up my private practice. And uh, I get a card in the mail, and it's got this fake million-dollar bill in it. And there's this message, scribbled from John, that says, Chris. And he had, actually had a picture of uh, our old ad, our first ad that we put in there, that Winter actually decided to say yes to, and we didn't have nowhere we were going to pay for it. But anyway... But it was an old 1940s ad that we, I, I had found from thing and just re, redid it and thing. And uh, first thing, the other thing I says, we move the ball and God does the healing. Call. That's pretty much was the ad. And John had cut a piece of it out of the newspaper, stuffed it in, and with a fake $1 million bill, and it said on the card, you're doing it the right way. You're going to make this bill real. Thank you, John. Because it drove me to make sure I made that bill real. So, who is the first time here or just graduated? Just opening? First time? Hey, Carter, come here for a second. So actually, crazy enough how God works in strange ways, right there, right there, back there, and the, and the yellow, and then there's two over there, Carter, right? My patients brought me a million dollar bill, chocolate, and I was like, oh my God, when you're trying to put your talk together, right? How awesome is that? But, but here's the thing. We don't have enough people in chiropractic today like John, like Sid, like Dee Dee. As a profession, we're, we're, we're pretty weak. I'd probably use a different word, but I'm not going to say it here on the stage. Because we don't want to stand up. We want easy. People are, are tired of like, looking for the easy way and work. Like, it's not hard to be successful in chiropractic. Not at all. But we got to get there. You got to make sure you're good. Right? So if you're one of those who's sitting here struggling in practice, realize that everything we're saying on this stage you can do. There ain't something special about any one of us here. We just love on our people and we show up, and we work long days, and we do sleepless nights. It, the, the chemistry has not changed. The secret is not any different. This place will change you if you let it. You'll hear that theme all day 
long and all weekend long. But it's not this quick fix, right? Yes, you're going to walk in Monday and you're probably going to have one of your best days ever, partially because you were closed for a couple days, right? We have our biggest day ever on Wednesday, ever in practice. And I know part of it was I'm closed, but you know what the greatest thing about it was? It actually showed our staff what our potential could be. That we thought it could always be only here about 100, 120 day, but you go to 160 and we did it without skipping a beat. And to let them see that what we can do, it's possible. And it's possible for you to see the numbers you want to see. But you got to keep coming back. It's like chiropractic. It takes time. It takes repetition. Success does not over, open overnight unless you win the frickin' lotto. So just like you teach your patients, you got to keep coming back. Right? Because all those external forces of life are going to cause those subluxations to return. Well, guess what? The subluxations that happen here and in your head, because life is like this, whatever it is coming at you, this is your soul adjustment. And you got to choose to change. Not changing is a choice. Most people don't want to change because it it's going to be uncomfortable. Growth is uncomfortable. A sexual, a sexual person begins with two beliefs. The future can be better than the present, and I have the power to make it so. So I think we all have a point in our lives where certain things change us and move us in a direction. And we have a choice when, that, when those things happen that they can bring us this way or they can bring us this way. My first one, I was practicing in Atlanta and I got myself in a really bad contract deal. And I decided to do the scary thing and basically walk away. Knowing that I might get sued, but it was just, it was a bad, bad situation. And I remember sitting in the little condo that I rented and my gas was shut off, and it was like the coldest day in Atlanta in like 50 years, and I'm burning newspaper just to stay warm. And I said, something's got to change. And I remember that change is the one I see in the mirror. That's got to make the change. The next big one for me was when my son Carter was born. <laughs> Why? Because it wasn't just about me anymore. Somebody else depended on me. So, living by the seat of your pants and having fun and doing this, no, it was time to show up and start working hard again. Third one, when we finally opened our, our own practice 13 years ago, and my wife looks me in the eyes after three months and says, oh, I think this went... Too close, sorry guys. And I'm loud, I just went louder. And she decides to say, hey, um, by the way, I am going to Pennsylvania tomorrow. I'm taking a short-term job, and I am covering our bills at home and the office. And I was like, what do you mean? What are you doing? She goes, you keep looking at people as dollar signs because you worry about making sure that we're all going to be okay. She goes, now you can just focus on loving them and serving them. And you want to talk about lighting a fire in my man and Ann's ass? And I know she was miserable, and for three months, she was up there. And one night she calls me, and she's, she's crying. She's had enough. And she goes, I know we can't do this. And I said, Yes, we can. I said, come home. No, we need this. I said, come home. I said, all right, go take a second, jump online, go look at the bank account. She drove home through the night that night. <laughs> <clears throat> so in that three months, we went from what, I guess it was like 25 people a week to like 150. 
And the only thing that changed, she reminded me of my, where my intent is. That if I just love him and serve him, he will take care of the rest. And by the way, get yourself a great kick-ass spouse that is willing to be your fox hole. And if you don't, man, life is so much better than that. And of course, when we lost our two children, once again, I had another choice, right? I had a choice of going this way or going this way. But each one of them, when they took their last breaths, I promised each one of them that I'm going to make sure that they're proud. So we did it this way. And the last four years, of five years, have been our best years in practice. Last year was our best year ever by quite a bit. So you got to remember this. When you take the side to... Uh, Step out of your comfort zone, and then you're going to want to make a change. Remember, the first person that's going to meet you is fear. And fear can just paralyze you. It can stop you from moving forward. You've got to find the strength to break through that fear. Because fear is just like this wall. There's nothing behind it. And so if you just break through it, It's there. And here's, um, if you ever look at fear, fear is always going to be there. Fear, a little fear is a good thing. A little fear will be a motivator. It'll push you, it'll push you a little bit forward. It'll check, make you check yourself. So you need to push through that wall. Push through that storm. You need to become the storm. Because damn it, our patients need us to. Our communities need us to. They need us to rise up and be strong. They need us to work hard. We need to educate. Get out into the public. Right? You know, we're restarting next month because of COVID. We had to shut down stuff. We had started right before COVID. Educating every single medical practice that we could get our into. I mean, we were walking into all the big ones. And just sitting down and having lunch and learns and teaching them what chiropractic, our version of chiropractic is. And you want me to tell you something? They have no idea. And when they actually find out what we really are, they love it. They absolutely love it. Because the majority of them are so frustrated, right? And they have no place to go bring patients. Because they're afraid they're going to get them on the opioid trail. They're like, there's got to be a better option. Well, educate them, because we have the answer. We've turned the, uh, over the last three years, uh, the largest... Um, Pete Ackett Group, who's now opening another giant location in our area. We have turned them into a chiropractic-friendly practice. Right? We get referrals all the time from them. Luckily, we're still at the bottom of their like last where they have nothing else works. But we're going to move ourselves up. I'll take that. That's a start, right? I'm in the door. Right? Great. Let's tell them you help helpless places. Because you know what? We've been crushing them. So then eventually they're going to start sending us more of different, not when it's the last resort, that we're one of the first options they go to. Success in chiropractic is very simple. Educate, be the master craftsman, bring the adjustment, love the people, and be humble. And stay in your lane. One of the greatest lessons I ever learned was from Dr. Sharp, who is a neonatologist. Well, he takes care of the, all the babies in the NICU. 
He was our twins' doctor. And he came in to see me in winter, before knowing that we, our kids were going to be spending time in the NICU. And he came in and he said, first thing he said was, hey, don't ask me anything about what's going on with you right now. He said, but once your babies take their first breaths to leave this hospital, I'm the guy. This is my lane. We have a great lane. We just have to learn to stay in it. I don't come in here, I mean, guys I've talked to in practice that are struggling, and they're like, well, I brought, I brought this in, and I brought that in, or what's the new one, the red light? Everybody's trying to bring in red light therapy. I have no idea what the hell it is. <clears throat> like, all you got to do is educate and adjust. Why are you bringing yourself a $10,000 bill that you can't pay for what? I love this quote um, from Martin Luther King. Martin Luther King only let one guy shine his shoes because of the passion that guy had for his job. Emily K. went on to say, if you are a sweet streeper, sweep streets like Beethoven, compose music. Be the best sweet streeper in the world. He called this mastering the length of life. Be a master. Whatever technique you do, be the best. If you're only seeing 50 a week right now, be the best 50 a week chiropractor. If you're seeing 100 a week, be the best 100. Because if you master it and you educate them, that number will change. Because our patients need us to do this. We will not survive. We need people to step up. I think you've noticed that now that Brian started it right before lunch. This is now the time in the program where things get turned up. And you're going to have to make some hard decisions over this weekend. Or not. Still a choice. And you can choose to stay here, or you can stay there. But if you're already miserable, why the hell would you want to stay there? Just because it's easy? So, I'm on the board for the um, FCA, Federation of Christian Athletes, and... Uh, we had Ben Watson come speak in November, and he shared an uh, awesome quote um, from Billy Graham that said, coaches touch more lives in one year than pastors do their lifetime. And I thought that was, huh. And I was like, yeah. Coaches touch what? Five 12, 53 if they play, do football, right? And the way they do a whole exponential thing, right? You touch one life, that's going to change another life, change another life. How many people do you see a day? How many lives do you get to touch? How many lives do you get to steer and change? Because you decided to lay, lay some seeds down. Because you lay enough seeds down, guess what happens? The trees start to grow. And then those trees start to lay more seeds. And the next thing you know, we got a forest. And that's what we need to be doing. And if you're not doing that, you need to start. Because we need warriors out there. We need people like John Batwell. Sid, Dee Dee, we didn't, I wouldn't be on this stage. You wouldn't be in these seats. You wouldn't be a substation based chiropractor. 
But it is now our time to step up. It's our time to be the change. So I want you to take Brian's thing earlier to heart. And that thing you uttered out, do something about it. Make it happen. Because if a sitter like me can do it, I know you can do it. It's not hard. Just serve with love. And we are all here for you. You just got to reach out and take our hand. If you don't know what step to take, because you are just frozen and paralyzed with fear, come grab one of us. Because we've all been there. Shoot, we're all still there. It is a daily decision. For me, it's a daily decision to choose happiness every single day because of what's happened to me over the last six years. But I choose it every single day. Yeah, some days will be an hour of crying, but then it's wipe it off, get it up, back to serving and loving my family. Because life is too damn short. And I'm not done making my impact on this world yet. Thank you for spending a few minutes with me. I love you.